Welcome in the name of Jesus. My name is Robert Paris. I want to share a message on how can I receive forgiveness with insight from Corey Timboom. This is a very powerful message and I pray it will minister. So many people have called me where they have been broken because their lives have been wrecked. The enemies come in and ransacked their marriages, their lives, their finances, their health, stolen their children. And they recognize it's because they opened the door to the enemy. So I pray this message would help you understand the importance of confessing and being washed by the blood of Jesus. We're told the word that we're not to be ignorant of the enemy's schemes. I want to share a message from Corey Ten Boom, or insight from her, because she was a lady that had every reason to be filled with bitterness and anger. Her family, who were Christians, uh, had protected Jews during the war. Unfortunately, the Nazis discovered them and imprisoned them. Uh, within a week of being imprisoned, the father died. Corey Ten Boom then would spend uh, a terrible time where she would go from consecration camps, forced labors, Ultimately, she would be released because of a clerical error. A week after she was released, she discovered that her colleagues in that camp that she was in were sent to the gas chambers. God, in His rich mercy, had delivered her. She learned a lot, and her message that she bring, and I want to summarize something that somebody else wrote about her, that I really think really embellishes and covers uh, this woman's true uh, heart. She said, this person said, perhaps the greatest scars uh, resulting from the Holocaust were the scars of bitterness and unforgiveness that destroyed many more lives. Corey struggled with these same feelings herself, yet through God's amazing work in her life, she became a worldwide symbol of reconciliation, forgiveness, and the ultimate hope found in Christ as she wrote nine books, spoke more than 60 countries, and produced five films as part of her ministry to Lost and Hurting, a ministry that didn't begin until she was in her 50s. When lists have been compiled of the greatest Christians of the 20th century, Corey's name is commonly included and often near the top. And I want us to get a hold as we start to pray, Father, we need you to come and do a work in us. We live in an hour where there's a rage in the world. There's so much anger. And the enemy is working overtime because, Jesus, you are coming soon. We want, Father God, to be cleansed. We want to walk holy and pure before you. Holy Spirit, come. Open our eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us a hearing heart in tune with the Father. Father, let your words have an impact. Holy Spirit, come and expose all darkness in us. Come, Holy Spirit, and give us a greater real revelation of what Jesus did on the cross. And let us receive that finished work. Let us be washed, Father, by the blood, that we might come before you as children, and that we may be led by the Spirit and become sons and daughters, worshiping you, Father, in spirit and truth, being a witness on this earth, free because of he who set us free. Father, I thank you for a now word, a right word today. And that not one person, Father God, would not be touched. They would receive that breakthrough, that forgiveness, and that life that's found in Jesus. Father, I break off every person that a plan of the enemy that's holding them captives. Father God, all that unforgiveness, all the decrees, all the things of people that have been spoken over lives. I thank you, Father God, for a breakthrough today in the name of Jesus. We give you all the honor, you all the glory, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if, but if, and we need to underline that, but if, we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to con- con- uh, sorry, forgive us of all unrighteousness. Because God wants to bring you back into the place of righteousness with Him. The, the, the Holy Spirit comes to convict you. And that conviction is to strengthen your identity in Christ. He wants to bring a greater revelation in your life of who you are and the things that are stealing from you that identity. The enemy comes. And we discover in 2 Corinthians, uh, make sure I got 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, we're not to be ignorant of the enemy's schemes. He turns up to condemn. And through condemnation, he seeks to steal your identity and hold you captive. And many people are held captive because of sins they've done. And it has allowed the enemy to come in and ransack their lives, to just take, destroy their marriages, their finances, their health, steal their children. And it's time that we stood up and said, no more. We laid hold of the blood of Jesus and we got the victory. 
The devil has stolen enough, and it's time to lay hold of the restoration of heaven. Families are on the line. Children are on the line. And it starts where we repent, where we return, and we are washed by the blood of Jesus. But if, if we will return and if we will confess. Let me share something that Corey Ten Boone said. May suppose you were a soldier during the war, and you had to do recon uh, reconnaissance of a certain territory. By mistake, you fell into the enemy's hands by entering his territory. Do you think that it would help if you then said, Oh, excuse me, please, it was not my intention to come here. I came here by mistake. Once you are in their territory, you're at their mercy. And once we open the door to the enemy, we're at his mercy. And he is, all he comes is to kill, steal, and destroy. And we've got to recognize the enemy. And we've got to recognize what the enemy's done in our lives and say enough is enough. At some point, we've got to make a stand. We're looking at our communities. We're looking at, you know, nobody's making a stand when it's time for the church to arise, to be awakened. And that means we need to come back and become sensitively, uh, sensitive, sensitive to the Holy Spirit again and His conviction of all darkness in us and that we confess. She went on to say this. Paul said in Ephesians 6, 2, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. We're in a spiritual war. We look around and we see all this stuff going on, on the earth, and we got to recognize it's a spiritual war. And the victory is not won through the natural methods. It's won spiritually. Your family, the victory is won spiritually. In your life, the, the victory is won spiritually. And if you want to change something, it's not by demanding your rights. It's not by me too. It's not anything else. But understanding it's a spiritual war. And we have to fight it with the spiritual weapons we've been given. She went on to say this, I'm not telling you these things to make you afraid. If I had no more to say than this, it would have been better for me to keep silent. But the first step towards victory is to know the enemy's position. And the wonderful thing about it is Jesus is the victor. He is far stronger than all the powers of hell. What you have to do is to close the door exactly where you opened it I mean this. Think of some scripture passages that speak of forgiveness. We've got to recognize that as we look back, and we need the Holy Spirit to show us, of areas we've opened the door and we have allowed the enemy to come in and do all this damage. And it's time those doors were shut, and it's time that we got back and we walked right before the Lord. Because He desires that we walk in peace. God desires that we are kept in perfect peace. We have the joy of the Lord as our strength. And if we've lost our peace and we've lost our joy, we've opened the door to something and allowed the enemy in. And it's time we say, Holy Spirit, show me. And we get the Holy Spirit to do work in us so that that avenue, that opportunity that we allow the enemy in is dealt with and shut once and for all. She was talking about a lady that she was ministering to. And the lady said, I feel happier after she got prayed with. But I know there's some sins which I've forgotten. I'm not completely free yet. Corey said, just tell Jesus about it as you did me and give thanks for forgiveness. And we're going to talk a little more about this because you don't receive forgiveness based on you earning it. You know, the spirit of religion loves to come and just make you guilty, make you earn it, put you through some purgatory as if somehow you can make it. It is simply by grace through faith. And we've got to come based on the authority of the blood of Jesus and the authority of the Word. I am forgiven because He said so if I do what the Word says, which is, but if I come and I confess and I allow that cleansing of the blood to remove all unrighteousness from me. It cannot be a show, but this has to be real. I've talked a lot about the secret place because the secret place is where we're real. The secret place is where I allow the Holy Spirit to so speak to me and have access to every area of my life. And it's not where I put on a show in front of people, but this is where I'm putting on before the Lord, truth. And I'm allowing the spirit of truth to come and have his way in me and through me and to expose all darkness in me. I encourage you to check out the whole series. There's a lot of videos on the secret place. She said, several times I've experienced seeming defeat. And maybe you've been there. They are the darkest moments of my life. I'm called to stay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not called to stay long in one place. And so I must often uh, stop my efforts too early. I've always hand the cases over to faithful Christians 
if there are available. What I always do in, in so much moments, sorry, what I always do in such moments is that I pray God may search my heart and show me if someone it has an unconfessed sin. Psalm 139, 23 through 24. If we are disobedient in anything, we are allying, allying ourselves with the enemy. This prayer for heart searching and after God has shown us sin, immediately confessing and claiming forgiveness on the ground of 1 John 7 through 9 is necessary in every battle with the enemy where he demonstrates his power and demon possessed and demon obsessed people. We're on dangerous ground. And anything of trust in ourselves, love of money, pride, fear, resentment, or any other sin that blocks the channel makes us powerless and must therefore instantly be brought under the cleansing blood of Jesus. We've got to recognize by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit has to so open the Word with such an authority and reality in our lives that it speaks louder to us, that He writes His law on our hearts, and everything that offends Him, we get the conviction immediately, because we've got to understand that opens the door to the enemy. He does not want us to be ransacked, destroyed by an enemy. He wants you free. He wants your family free. He wants your family restored. He wants your marriage, your finances. He wants your health restored. And He's trying with, to touch us, to reveal to us, convict us, and bring us to a place where we will confess and close the door to the enemy. And we need to be instant. We need to be fast as he touches us and we repent and confess. And as I said, not on us trying to earn it or how we feel about it. Because I may not feel forgiven, but if he says I'm forgiven, I receive it and I give him thanks. I begin to worship him for it because it's by faith and not by feeling. She said this, pray together that the Lord may search your hearts and show you whether there is a sin you have not confessed to the Lord. 1 John 7 and 9 shows you, um, shows you there is forgiveness and redemption by the blood of Jesus. If you're not cleansed, a sin, uh, I'm sorry, if you're not cleansed, a sin in you can be a starting point for the devil. Pray together for a covering and protection by the blood of Jesus. Don't allow the enemy in. Don't allow the devil to persuade you this sin is too great. The blood of Jesus is greater. Simply come and confess and be washed. Simply come and receive that and begin to worship and say, Thank God that I am forgiven and that my sin is washed as far as the east is from the west. Well, what if I do it again? Then quickly repent. Get back up. And we now need the Holy Spirit to come and strengthen us. Because I'm now aware of where the enemy is attacking me, and I need to build myself strong in the Lord in that area. Not in my strength, but in His. She went on to say this, You see, these things are detestable in God's eyes, because they are ways of asking the devil to help you. All those things, soothsaying, spiritism, horoscopes, they all belong to the devil. But the wonderful thing is that though, um, though the devil's power is great, his power is limited. Well, God's power is unlimited. And that's why we simply need to lay our sins before him. And then, yes, the Lord will forgive us and make us free. Recognize the devil is small. You've got a big Jesus, small devil. And as big as he may try to make himself, and as big as the sin may appear, the blood of Jesus is greater. And Jesus is the Lord of all. And if you'll receive his forgiveness, you will receive the power and cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. There is no sin it cannot wash you from if we come and we repent. Now, it says Jesus loves sinners. He only loves sinners. He has turned away anyone who came, sorry, he's never turned anyone away who came to him for forgiveness. And he died on the cross for sinners, not for respectable people. It was exactly for sinners that he suffered so terribly on the cross, so much that it was impossible for him to bear, so dreadful that he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He did all that for sinners, so just come. Now, what if I forgive, com committed the unforgivable sin? You would not be seeking forgiveness if you committed it. If we're there, we're that place. We don't want forgiveness. We understand the fullness. We've walked in it, and we've completely rejected it, the Word says. But if you're being convicted and touched, then God is calling you to come back to the power of the blood to return to Him and be washed today because He's recognizing everything the enemy's done in your life. 
We look at Joel chapter 2 and we see all these devastating attacks of the enemy. And the call from heaven is return. Don't rend your garments. Don't put on an outward show, but be changed from the heart by a heart confession. And we've got the blood of Jesus, the most powerful authority in heaven and earth. It is forever settled before the high court of heaven that if you come and you plead the blood of Jesus and you confess your sins, there is a washing. She went on to say this. That is the reality. If you come to Jesus, the burden of sin will fall from you. You can confess them to him. You may and you must confess them to him. And it's not just that you confess them, but you repent of them. John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to just, God, I got my hand caught in the cookie jar. And it's got to be a heart thing. It's got to be a heart change, a heart commitment. God, I'm coming by the Holy Spirit convicting me, showing me. And we need a great... Holy Spirit, give us a full revelation of what we've done and the impact and how our lives, what we're going through, how we've opened the door to the enemy and how Jesus, you're calling us today to be washed, cleansed so that you can restore us. And it has to be from the heart. It has to be real. Jesus gave his blood on the cross to purchase you and me a terrible, heavy and expensive price. You speak of the blood of Jesus. You think of the completed work on the cross. But as it says in the Bible, if you bring your sins to Jesus now, he will forgive you and he will cast your sins into the depths of the sea. We cannot imagine how horrific a price was paid. It's real. The blood of Jesus was real. The price he paid was real. So as real as your sins will are, the blood is real. The cross is real. And if you apply the blood and the power of the cross in your life, you can be forgiven. But it has to have such an impact in us and a change in us that, God, I don't want to go there. And we've got to come to the place where we see once and for all what we've done and the consequences because the wages of sin are death. And it's time that we recognize in a world where it's all okay, where there are no consequences. Yes, there are. And many of us are walking in the consequences of what we've done. And the church and all these leaders have just been preaching these nice messages to make you feel good, but they're not bringing you deliverance. They're not bringing you life. And Jesus wants you to have life and that abundant to be free. Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Matthew 9, 13. What should we do? Proverbs 28, 13 tells us, He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Do not cover up, but confess and stop sinning. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. And many of us like to hide and cover. We did something and we try to block it out and pretend it didn't happen. And we put this general confession. Oh, we need to come and get it addressed and dealt with and that door closed. We need to put an end to it. Let us not just, you know, skirt around it anymore. Let's deal with it. Let's get it right before the throne of heaven and forever be washed. Not believe in the completed work of forgiveness. Have you ever asked for forgiveness for the same sin again? In that case, you were just as silly as that little girl. And she was talking, giving a story. We need to ask for forgiveness and then believe we are forgiven. And then we need to turn away from our sin in the power of the Lord. Listen, you receive the forgiveness based on faith in his word and what he said he would do. Not on how you feel about it. Not based on what anybody else says about it. Not because somebody else says, well, you know what, you've earned it. No, simply because by faith I believe what the word says and it was real. I came in sincerity and I repented. And that forgiveness is made available to me. I am washed today and now begin to worship. Now to give thanks to God for that forgiveness. Now give to lift him up and worship and thank him for what he did. Not because you earned it, but because of his great mercy. I mean, you get a greater revelation of his mercy. Some of the greatest people that walked in the greatest mercy were those forgiven much. Those that understood where they really were and what Jesus did for them wrecked by mercy and God wants to so wreck you with mercy so that you become a witness of it and this generation this hour needs a people that step up and are real and can confess listen this is where I was but thank God for the blood let me tell you what it did 
And let me tell you about his peace now in my life. Let me tell you about his joy. Let me tell you about life that I now have. Let me tell you about the God who restores and redeems. Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, we've got to get a hold of this. And I want to add this because it's so important. A lot of time we want forgiveness, but we do not want to forgive. And Corey Tim Boone had every reason not to forgive. And in this hour, in this culture, it's okay not to forgive. No, it's not. We are required by the law of heaven to forgive. Because if you do not forgive, you're not forgiven. And if you want to receive forgiveness, listen, maybe you're demanding justice. Maybe you were hurt. Maybe all these things. You're going to have to trust them to the Lord. He is the avenger. He is the one who will vindicate you. He is the one. And you've got to receive the mercy. Holding on to it's not changing somebody. Holding on to all that unforgiveness. Holding on to all those things not going to make it right. And it's not setting you free. All this doing is allowing the enemy to come in and destroy you. Destroy your home. And God doesn't want you destroyed. He wants you built up. He wants you restored and blessed and filled with life. That's the testimony God wants. And that's what the world needs to see. In a world that's trying to somehow get justice through destruction, through the enemy's ways, there's only one way to justice. And that's through the precious blood of Jesus and through the cross. She said this, to forgive just as we expect the Lord to forgive us. Jesus said, if you don't do it, we won't receive forgiveness ourselves. So we have to. So you might as well understand, you've got to, but you've got to understand the importance You've got to understand that it opens the door for God to move in your life and to move in theirs. And as long as you're holding on, you're preventing, you're hindering. It's time we let go and let God do. We've got to let God be Lord and not us. She said this, A piece of good advice is to forgive anyone immediately. And I mean immediately. If they say or do something against you, then the devil won't have a chance to keep a shadow in your heart. How many of us have walked and the enemies had access to us because of unforgiveness. And how to that root of bitterness, so many things have sprung up that you didn't want. And how many lives have been destroyed because of it. Isn't it time that we came back to the blood and we said, God, forgive me. God, do a work in me. We're looking outwards. Let's stop looking outwards and let's start looking inwards. Let God do a work in us today. I can't do, I can't change other people. But there's a spiritual battle that's going on. And we've got to understand the spiritual weapons and how we do spiritual warfare. And it starts by me repenting. Me, one-on-one, in the secret place, surrendering, saying, God, it's you and me. And I want to be real before you. I want to be really changed. And I forgive. I'm asking for your forgiveness. She said this, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. That godly love knows how to forgive. It will also succeed in your heart and mind. Be filled with God's Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And His love will be so much stronger than annoyance, indignation, or hatred. It means forgiving, forgetting, and loving. And I know that's sometimes hard, but if you will trust in Him, if you will come and in that secret place, that safe place, be found in Him and let go, trust Him, that's the place where you can open up your heart and He will put a guard around it. He will build walls of salvation and gates of praise. And you can trust Him. People you can't, people will hurt, people will discourage, and people will disappoint. But He doesn't. And if you will trust Him and you allow Him by coming and forgiving and asking for forgiveness and allowing His mercy in, you will discover how much He can change your life today and the difference it will make. And how you can step into the place of restoration and it can begin to impact the world around you. The change that you so desperately sought, the justice you so were crying out for, you start to begin to receive in Him. Oh, I pray you get this, and I pray that you're blessed and encouraged and set free in the name of Jesus. Let the Word carry final authority, that you will be washed by the blood. I thank you for listening. I want to so encourage you to check out more in the Secret Place series on the restoration. Let the word be final authority. Cling to the word. Go after him with all of your might and heart. Because if you will diligently seek him, you will find him. And you will find the God who cares. And you'll find he's rich in his mercy for you. And that today is the day of salvation. I want you to know that we're praying for you. And I ask you to be praying for us. I ask you to consider joining our prayer partnership. 
It's simple. You go to GodsGeneralsRevivals.com and you sign up on our partner page. It costs you nothing. Now, if the Lord puts you in your heart, you want to share with us financially, great. But you do as the Lord leads. I want you simply to receive that prayer partnership program and be, have some people pray for you. And as you pray for us to receive the reward, we're seeing so many lives touched and changed. And I want to ask you as well to consider liking, sharing, subscribing, because as you do, the algorithms at YouTube and Google get this video out to reach and impact more lives. I want more lives touched, brought back into an intimacy with Jesus. I want more people to know that hope, that living hope in Jesus, to have a dependency and life changed. We're living in the last days and Jesus is coming soon. We cannot play games anymore. We need to get the real, the real Jesus in our lives. We need to be really changed so that we become real witnesses of the victory of the cross. I want to thank you. And as I said, I want you to know that we're praying for you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus. Amen.